Welcome to Engineering Update, brought to you by Mauser Electronics, the electronics component distributor with the widest selection of the newest products. I'm Jeff Ranke, Editorial Director of Electronic Component News, and in this week's headlines, we're talking about self-healing stretchable wires using liquid metal, self-assembling silica microwires, the Bay Bridge becomes the world's largest light sculpture, printing your own animatronic robot, and new research into larger, safer lithium-ion batteries. recent issues involving Boeing 787 Dreamliner, there's been a lot of talk in the news lately about batteries, including the stagnant development of the standard lithium-ion battery, which could change with new research being conducted by the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Researchers at ORNL have recently developed a nanoporous solid electrolyte material, which conducts ions a thousand times faster than its original form. The new energy-dense lithium-ion batteries may mean safer, more efficient batteries for electric cars and renewable energy storage devices. Since today's lithium-ion batteries use a highly flammable liquid electrolyte, safety from overheating is of great concern. This becomes even more dangerous as manufacturers are pressured to pack more and more potency within a smaller volume. However, as the team at ORNL has found, the key to greater efficiency and safety lies in producing a solid electrolyte. And they have done just that. By manipulating a lithium theophosphate material in the process known as nanostructuring, the team was able to alter the structure of the crystals that make up the material. This new material conducts the ions in a battery more safely and efficiently than the traditional carbon-based anodes. This makes for an end product that is potentially 10 times more powerful. The iconic San Francisco Bay Bridge is about to undergo a bit of a makeover. The sturdy 75-year-old bridge isn't getting any changes done to its structure, rather it's being turned into a work of night art. World-renowned artist Leo Virel has commissioned to transform the bridge into the world's largest animated light sculpture. The epic 1.8 mile wide, 500 feet high structure will debut on March 5th of this year, running for at least two years as an installation piece. Over 25,000 white LEDs will be installed and engineered to program a complex display of animated effects and patterns. The immensity of the bridge, which will require an immensity of lights, will be a surprisingly energy efficient venture as it is boasted to cost no more than $30 a day. The process of installing the lights is definitely not for height fearing technicians, as each of the 300 cables which make up the length of the bridge must be individually rigged. In order to achieve the ambitious animation of the completed project, Leo Villarreal conceived his own proprietary software to control each and every one of those individual lights, which surely is a feat in and of itself. The lights, which will produce 255 different levels of brightness, will be a spectacular draw for engineers, artists, and tourists alike. Pair that with the highly sophisticated programming sequencing of the lights, and the animations are truly limitless. Another artist is trying his hand at engineering in this week's news is French sculptor and model maker Gaël Langevin is trying his hand at robot making with the help of 3D printing. Mr. Langevin has designed and engineered his very own animatronic robot called In Move. And now, thanks to 3D file sharing site Thingverse, so can you! The electronic components and designs are shared with other hobbyists and engineers as a sort of cooperative project. At this point, Langevin only has an arm, a hand, a head, and torso to this life-size robot. But unlike other DIY robots of the sort, each component, right down to the fingers, are individually activated. Of course, we wouldn't let you go without showing you all the tricks in Move can do so far. Langevin has chosen a combination of Serial Term, My Robot Lab, and Arduino sketch programming languages, and he's invited you designer and electrical engineers out there to contribute your, ta your talents to this collaborative project. You really might want to check this out, as his progress has already garnered the attentions of several university labs. If this robot project is perfected, just think of all the future possibilities of 3D printing and robot innovation. Soon maybe everyone will have their own robot avatars. So we've got a robot with a head, a hand, an arm, and a torso. I think we just gave the Sci-Fi Channel their next movie idea. Moving on, we're going to take you to North Carolina State University's research into self-healing stretchable wires. When the team at NCSU created an electrical wire that could be stretched up to eight times its regular length a month ago, they had no idea the new material would also possess the ability to heal itself. This is all made possible by the newest super material made up of gallium and idium. This conductive liquid substance is what lies encased in the wire's elastic polymer coating, which allows the material to regenerate itself, even after being severed. 
In order to accomplish this, engineers bored little tunnels through the cylindrical-shaped polymer. Those microfluidic channels were then filled up with indium-gallium liquid, which consistently keeps the electrical current flowing, even when the wire is cut. That is because when the material is sliced, the exposed liquid metal oxidizes, causing a reactive film to form over the exposed region, in much the same way as the human body produces a scab over a wound. Ideally, this could mean that cut pieces of the wire could be easily mended back together. These super-resilient wire pieces could be formed in infinite ways to shape three-dimensional conductive objects. It also means we're being robbed of probably the most coolest part of any movie, where they're trying to figure out which wire to clip. The guy's sweating, he doesn't know what to do, the blue wire, the red wire, he doesn't know! Oh wait, it doesn't matter, because the wire just grows back together. Thanks a lot, North Carolina State University researchers. In other news, a new generation of integrated optical devices is currently underway. An international team of researchers have discovered self-assembling nanoparticles, which can be used to make highly uniform silica wires. Silica is a highly thermal processing material with optical transparency that makes things such as the internet and transmittable data possible. However, this light speed transmission of data through silica and electronic and photonic components, such as optical switches, circuits, and sensors, has long troubled engineers since silica is typically incompatible with other materials. Engineers at the Optical Society of America are currently working on solving this long-standing problem through the use of evaporating self-assembling silica nanoparticles at room temperature. They recently made a breakthrough in demonstrating single photon emitting nanodiamonds embedded in silica, which is the first step toward a practical photon source for future quantum computing. Let's break this down. When the microfluidic currents inside the droplets of water evaporate, they herd the nanoparticles into specific patterns directed by intermolecular attractive forces. Then the nanoparticles crystallize when the solvent evaporates. The team at OSA discovered that by changing the shape of the droplet and elongating it in certain ways, they could change those molecular forces of attraction, which ultimately controlled how the nanoparticles self-assembled. The researchers anticipate that their processing technology will allow complete control over nanoparticle self-assembly for various technologies including microwire devices and sensors, photon sources, and possibly silica-based integrated circuits. This would ideally pave the way for technologies to seamlessly integrate microfluidic, electronic, quantum, and photonic functionalities, and proves that even nanodiamonds are a girl's best friend. That wraps up this week's report. I like the Niners by a touchdown. I'm Jeff Ranke, and this has been your Engineering Update.